Good morning, everybody. Oh, it's, it's so good to have that bell, Owsley, to actually invite us to take that pause, all the things that are trailing behind us that got us up in the morning and got us into this room and actually drop in. And thank you so much for that generous introduction and for your invitation here. Uh, I feel really like drenched in uh, being connected to my heart and to all of the people who have been here these last three days. It's just, it's uh, a bounty of a lot of cross connection between communities, between ideas. It's very uncommon. It's very uncommon to be in a space where we can really like let our hearts out and, and, and shine and drop into the vulnerability of being, being in the yearning, in the deep yearning that each religious tradition brings to the table. And so thank you so, so, so much. And to the whole crew, Steph and Tina and Juniper and Sarah, who has been amazing in helping us get ourselves together. Um, in the opening ceremony, I just loved what uh, one of the singers, and I, I don't remember her name, I just remember what she said, which was that the news of the world is filled with separation but the news of the heart is filled with connection. And that is what this convening is all about. So it's really good also to be here in Louisville. Let's see if I get that right. Louisville, am I saying it right? <laughs> Louisville. Um, I grew up, my best friend when I uh, was growing up was from Louisville. And I spent a lot of time in her house, in her kitchen, her, her mom's southern cooking put my mom's northern cooking to shame. And so I always tried to time myself at her house so I could be invited to dinner. And our families were very, very different. Her family was Christian. My family was Jewish. She had married parents, so she was from an intact family, as they called them in that day. And my parents were divorced. It was just me and my mother. They lived in a house. And we lived in an apartment. Um, there are all of these different cultural tugs. Her father was very conservative, and he worked for the military. He was a security guard and walked around in the house oftentimes with like this big ring of keys and a gun holster, which made me really kind of scared. And uh, my mother was an anti-war liberal. So lots of differences. And even as a young person, I, I could feel that. Like I could feel that tension, but, but, it didn't stop Debbie and I from being like really, really important friends uh, in that young age. And it, it didn't stop our parents, even though I know I could feel their, you know, they're looking at each other kind of like this. It didn't stop them from taking care of each other's children. And that's really what this panel is about, right? Like, how is it that we can create a world where we, we feel that all children are like our own children? All neighbors are our kin. The earth is precious. It's our source of life. So that, that is what we're going to talk about. And um, I want to just throw out a word uh, from a futurist. I don't know if you've ever heard of D. Hawk. He, he actually died at the age of 93 just this year, July. But I saw him talk like almost 30 years ago. And I still remember to this day something he said. He coined a term, chaord. And chaord is a blend of chaos and order. And the, I, the idea, he studied vastly all things in the universe. He, he invented the Visa card, by the way, the credit card. Um, but he, and that's what he's known for. But he did all of this philosophizing. And he said that it is completely predictable, it is scientifically known that all things unfold in a wave between chaos and order, chaos and order. And that in that moment, when there's breakdown and things are beginning to turn into chaos, if we can hold the vision for the future steadily together, when the chaos reorganizes itself into the next level of order, it will reflect that vision. 
And so I think part of what we're doing here with sacred stories and, and sharing, building a shared vision for the future that is built on compassion, connection, and care instead of competition, domination, destruction, extraction, as this breaks down, if we can be chaos and hold that vision together, the reorganization and as order reemerges, it's much more likely to reflect that vision. In a minute, I'm gonna ask you to uh, reflect on your own neighbor experience, but I'm gonna throw out an example just to get you, just to get you primed um, of like, something that happened to you when a neighbor extended a kindness. I was back when I, before I became friends with Debbie, I had no friends. My, my mother, we moved from New York to Florida, so this was a period where I still didn't have friends. I would go to school, I would come home, and since it was just me and my mother and she worked full time, she would not be home and I would, you know, be home alone. And as I still do to this day, I would often forget my key. And so this meant that I had to sit outside the, the back door. We had a little patio. I would sit there for a couple of hours waiting for my mother to get home. And on this one day, I was just sitting there, and this woman, and I still remember her name, Mrs. Mendelssohn, uh, came across the little stretch of grass and offered me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I was really grateful for the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But really what I was was like totally relieved of my loneliness and my feeling afraid and grateful that a, an adult was there to take care of me. And it, it moved me so much, her kindness, this little tiny gesture that 50 years later I remember it, right? So I'm gonna ask you, we're, this is gonna be very short, to, uh, if you want, you could close your eyes. We're gonna take like 30 seconds. And if it helps you to put your hand on your heart, and take a deep breath in. Just scan your memory for a moment, a time when a neighbor, and it doesn't have to be somebody who lived right next door to you, but you know, neighborhood-ish, extended themselves to you, did a kindness for you. And if you can't think of one for whatever reason in this moment, think of when you did it for somebody else. Okay, just 30 seconds and then I'm gonna bring you back. Okay, I hope you were able to find someone, some memory, some fragment, or something that was really big, easy to remember, and just extend a, a wish of gratitude to that person. They may have passed, you may not know their name, but just send uh, gratitude into time, space. Yesterday we talked about this idea, the past, the present, and the future are always kind of moving back and forth fluidly, more fluidly than we think and understand. And we can take that as a practice, right? Touching our heart. Uh, I do it. I do it when I'm kind of lost. I just touch my own heart and it helps me connect. And that's something else that people have been talking about throughout the festival. Like what are the practices that keep us alert and kind of in constant sacred time and space and relationship with each other? <laughs> 